Hello, welcome to Los Comics TV Kung Fu Special. <laughs> yes, our first Kung Fu Special. Uh, we'll explain that in a second. Um, so, I got a package in today. Um, some of you may have, may have seen me mention this on my social networks. Um, so, I'm gonna I'm gonna do an unboxing, and then we're gonna flip through this. It's a it's a magazine. It's um, so it's it's a 1970s Marvel comic. Uh, magazine, uh, Deadly Hands of Kung Fu, number 19, which is the first appearance of the White Tiger, uh, the Puerto Rican martial arts superhero, um, which is Marvel's first uh, Latino superhero and probably the first Latino superhero mainstream American comics, um, definitely in the modern era. So uh, let's take a look at it, okay? Uh, my name is Javier Hernandez. I'm a cartoonist, um, best known for my comic book character, El Muerto, um, and there'll be a link down below this uh, video here, uh, you know, where you can pick up my comics or check them out, but right now, let's look at this book. Here's a little note the person put on here, thank you, postal workers, they're very nice. Um, so yeah, this is a pretty thick box, it's just one magazine, but this, um, obviously this guy who sold it, he knows it's a valuable comic, and it is. Um, so yeah, this is very well protected, which I appreciate. Um, I did start cutting, there was, I don't know, for some reason there was like another piece of cardboard on top with tape. I guess he wanted to make sure no one would slit it open, which again, good for the seller. So I took that off and, um, cause I didn't want to spend too much time cutting this open and unwrap, you know, sometimes these sellers really pack it in with all, you know, tons of stuff. We'll see what's in here as far as how much styrofoam and boxes and popcorn, whatever. Hopefully not too, hopefully it's secure, but it, hopefully it's not a big mess to get to. I'm thinking it's, okay, so that's, it's gonna be sandwiched in here, right? So this is all just cardboard and, yeah, like I said, it's very well protected, which I really appreciate because this is not a $20 book or, you know, anywhere down in that category. Um, so let me just slit this open carefully. But yeah, you can tell it's sandwiched in there between uh, these two cardboards and then it's got the uh, bubble wrap and then it was already secure inside the box. So that's all good, like I said. Top, oh, you can already start seeing the cover here. Uh, let me do, let me get this open and then uh, I'll start talking about this. I always debate, like should I make it an unboxing or just open it, you know, take it out of the box and then start the video. but. In this particular case, this is a very special uh, magazine, historic. So, some of you can probably already tell the character that's on the cover. So, this um, Marvel magazine, um, Deadly Hands of Kung Fu, came out in '74, I believe, around for like 33 issues, pretty much monthly. And you know they were already doing obviously their black their color comics by the truckload, but they started doing these uh, various comic magazines. So it's magazine size. Um, okay, <laughs> I always happen to have an El Muerto comic next to it. So yeah, it's just you know wider and a little taller than a regular comic. So. Let me uh, take it out of the plastic bag. I don't think we have too much glare on this. I try to adjust the lighting. Okay, so here we go. Let me, uh, here we go. Till hands of Kung Fu. Um, I'm just looking at the condition. Again, I wasn't trying to buy a mint condition because mint always comes with a huge price tag, especially for a first appearance of a major character and you know, such an old comic, it was a 40 years old. Uh, 1975 or so. Anyway, the math the math whizzes out there. Please do it for me. Anyway, it's a painted cover. So is the the martial art characters were obviously featured in this uh, comic. I mean, even though some of these guys had their own co color comic, uh, these black and white uh, stories try to be a little more mature. Probably just more violent, really. Maybe some cuss words and uh, maybe some sexy things going on, but nothing major. But um, that's why they're black and white magazines. Um, and the cover by Bob Larkin. Wow. Now just check out that beautiful Iron Fist there for a second. Yeah, as a kid, when every time I'd see a painted cover 
on these magazines or on uh, collection book collections. Like for us, like Bob's well, first time we saw painted superhero art, so they always had a more realistic look compared to just a regular, uh, you know, the flat comic book art. But not too realistic, right? The guy in a uh, lime green and yellow uh, spandex and such. But yeah, it's the classic stuff. This Shang Chi, uh, which j just had a movie last year. Anyway, so issue nineteen was a debut of. Right here. So Sons of the Tiger was an ongoing feature in here. Um, these three guys um, who each had a part of an amulet. Um, yeah, believe it or not. So one guy had the, the, it was the head of a tiger. And then the other two guys each had like one of the paws. So they each wore the necklace. And then I guess when they got together, they kind of had these super martial art powers. Um, but anyway, in this particular, uh, and then there's an Iron Fist story in here. Chris Claremont, Rudy Nibres, Nibres, um, which, oh God, yeah, Rudy Nibres is such a phenomenal artist, um, but maybe we'll go back and look at this, it's, yeah, great stuff, but the Sons of the Tiger were already a feature in this uh, magazine, and then in this particular issue, number 19, um, Bill Matlow and George Perez, and Jack Abel, the inker, but Bill Matlow and George Perez, the main uh, creative team as far as coming up with the story ideas and then writing and drawing it uh decided to introduce a puerto rican superhero um so let's get to it let's just let me jump to that New letters page write letters for the previous stories and then the main feature of course is going to be ads for karate and then there was always like articles because it's a magazine there's always articles in the magazine um this must be about martial arts they're always interviewing either a different martial artist or, of course, they would do reviews, uh, martial art films. And we are talking about the 70s. Everybody was kung fu fighting. Um, and they have interviews with uh, martial artists and actors from the films. Um, I don't know what that's about. Some guy lying on the street. After History of the Empty Hand. Yeah, this is it's like a martial art magazine until you get to the comics parts. Yeah, several articles. Good chunk of articles in here, actually. Count Dante. Look that guy up. The most deadliest man alive. <laughs> uh, wow, that seems like it has more articles than the usual magazines. I don't know, maybe because they're all they're not separated by a comic. Okay, prologue. Here we go. So, um... I have not re ever re read this issue, but again, it's an unboxing, so it's my first time to look at it. Um, what other background can I give you? So yeah, that was uh, Bill Matlow Perez got together to do this, create this character. Um, from what I read, it, there was an interview, it was a good interview book by George Perez. Uh, this is published in 1985, here's George, uh, from Fanagraphics, believe it or not, when they were still, e when they were still bothering with mainstream superhero content um but there's a so this is a old these are old interviews and um here we go so basically there's a little background in here um matt Lowe was, was always did very socially conscious and politically conscious it says comma but it must be work because just it cuts off bill matt Lowe, who always did a very socially and polit politically conscious comma so let's assume work wanted to do a story that featured a Puerto Rican characters, so that he could deal with, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the Puerto Rican experience. This is George talking here in the interview. He had someone he could tap as far as information. So he and I talked about creating a Puerto Rican character for the Kung Fu strip, and he came up with the name White Tiger. I came up with the alias and the family background of his alias. And he created him in a totally unprecedented move of having a strip called Sons of the Tigers and actually writing out the lead characters. And so it became the White Tiger strip. So, like I said, this is this story is the end of the White Tiger storyline. And I guess um, from what I read, I think they quit the three guys here. Uh, the Lin Sun, uh, Abe... A Brown and um, so it was a Chinese character, a black guy and a white guy, and then the white guy is Bob Diamond, I think. Um, 
so yeah, this is all new to me. Like I said, actually reading this is new to me. I'll have to definitely read it later. But so I guess yeah, I guess they quit for whatever reason. And if I remember, they yeah, it's like they just tossed their uh, just tossed their necklaces off. Right, I've had it. I'm out of here. And it's like this character she picks him up. Okay, so he's got the uh, he's got the head here, the head of the uh, tiger. He's got the main one, maybe. And then the other two guys each have the claw. Um. So now they're fighting together here. Okay, so the the team is definitely breaking down. It's like a band that's breaking up George uh, this is George's about second year he got, he got to Marvel in what 74 I think his first work and this is 75 so you know right out the gate he's already creating the character this is interesting this panel it's sideways that's really I don't think I've ever seen that but you know he rotates it so he can fit the, against these four panels in there. That's pretty. That's really interesting. Um, great work though. Look, look at the figure work here, and inked by an old pro, Jack Abel. Um, well, that's some great. That's really great work. The question balance the answer. Somehow it seems meaningless now. Wow, they're giving us some uh, instruction here. Looks like. Yeah, I can't wait to read this. I mean, yeah, these guys were a team, and now they're, uh, <laughs> this is a real breakup. Worse than the Beatles. Then he picks them up, and now they're walking out. Thanks, brother. Well, okay. Beat up your uh, teammate, and um, then you go off his friends. We'll see what that's about. So what happens, yeah. <laughs> Next day, the three amulets, right? There's the the dragon head, the dragon head. Tiger head and the two different paws. Who picks them up? Guess. A little bit of Spanish that Bill Mantlo would throw in. Oh, yeah. These things are out of sight. It's the 70s, man. Somebody must have lost them. Um, and I think Perez said he based Hector Ayala. He came up with the name and then I guess the look. I, I think it was based on someone he knew. But, you know, so it really does have that authentic Puerto Rican uh, input, right, from the artist. That's the way it goes, though. Finders, keepers, and all that jazz. Carajo. Este es más increíble. The amulets, they're, they're tingling like crazy. I'm doing a motion comic here, reading this. I feel funny, like I'm going to be sick or something, like I'm changing. Uh-oh. Oh, oh boy, there we go. There's our uh, first image of the white tiger. Different, like I'm somebody else. Power shooting through me. I, I've never felt a rush like this. Never. And there's pictures in my head, things that don't make any sense, things that I shouldn't know, like my name. I never heard it before, never even dreamt it. But I know that I'm the white tiger. And I ain't, and I ain't never going to be the same again. The story, like most stories, has a beginning. This is it. <laughs> I always love these uh, you know, Marvel talking right to you. Okay, so yeah, by, he combines the three amulets. Now he's got the power of the white tiger. Obviously, we need to find out what happens in the subsequent issues. Um, but yeah, simple costume design. I mean, you know, other than the gloves and then the straps on the, the leggings, um, you know, it's like a naked body or, you know, no other design on it. Uh, and the small little eyes, it almost looks like the Black Panther if he had the little, uh, the little ears sticking out. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a black and white comic, but in color, in the color, in the color comics, yeah, he's all pure white. And then the amulets are green. Usually they're like a glowing green. Um, so that's it. That's, uh, so yeah, it's really like the end of the Sons of the Tiger saga, which is interesting. And then you introduce the new character, um, who's, I guess, a combination of the three of them, or at least the three little amulets introduced a new character at the last page so and then there's a couple of you know there's an ad for their planet of the ape comic magazine very cool stuff in there star lord does that sound familiar to all you 
Guardians of the Galaxy MCU fans. Interesting. Uh, Punisher. So, yeah. Kung Fu and Karate. No shortage of uh, Kung Fu in this magazine. Anyway, that's what we got, folks. Um, the debut of The White Tiger. And it's a literal debut because it does show up in the end, last page in the costume. Sometimes, sometimes like, they'll debut the character in his secret identity in this particular issue. And then the following issue is his first full appearance in costume. Um... So when, you, when you're looking these things up, it says, like, first appearance as so-and-so, and then first appearance in costume. But anyway, in this issue, this is literally the first appearance of the White Tiger. There we go. This is it, to be continued. So this is issue 19. So I bought this just, I just bought this the other night. Uh, a few, it got here quick, actually, like three days ago, three, three or four days ago. Um, I had never had this issue, uh, strangely. I mean, I was always, you know... At the time, it was like, well, I don't want to spend that much. Um, and again, there's way more expensive ones, believe me. Um, yeah, I saw some, there was some going for a thousand, thousand, two thousand, two thousand five hundred, whatever. Uh, mine's way below that, believe me, way below that. Um, but over the years, I've gotten about some of these. I got, I think I've got, I, I know I have at least three issue, later issues of these. Um, in fact, the ones I bought have the white tiger on the cover. I found them about, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. Um, I don't remember what the price was, jeez, I mean, uh, maybe 15, 20 bucks, I'm thinking, just knowing how I would want to spend, maybe 20 at the most, so um, I bought those three, and they, they have, two of them have the white tiger on the cover, the other one was this really nice cover with, um, Iron Fist and Shang-Chi fighting together, I think, and so they all, all three of those had white tiger stories, so anyway, so I bought this, you know, the, I got, what well, was one night up to, past midnight, I just, I gotta get this, um, and then I started thinking, I started looking at the listings for the other issues, right? So, you know, number, number 20, 21, 22, so, 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 subsequent issues. And I looked up online, you know, what issues he appeared in, Deadly Hands of Kung Fu. Um, and I, I wrote them all down. And then I started looking them online. And, you know, some of them were, most of them were under 10 bucks, the comics, the, the, the issues. Uh, some were like six or eight. And then did not beat up. I mean, they're not the, this is actually, you know what, this is a very good copy. I don't know how to grade these comics by the grading system that they have, but this one is really great shape. I mean, it's a little torn here, but the, as they say, the cover is still attached by the, with the staples. That's always something to look at. Um, but the, the other way, so I ended up buying, I think, eight other, the eight other issues. And since I already had the other three, so now I have all 11 issues, which eventually I'll have them, right? These are... You know, they'll be coming in over the next week or so. The rest of them, um, I got two of them. I got three of them. I got this one and the other, and two of them. And I'm waiting for the other uh, five to show up within the week or so. And then with the three I already have, there's my full run. So I have the full run of the White Tiger um, in his original appearances. He started he started appearing in, in other comics later, shortly after, um, same era, seventies, and. Um, Bill Mantlo wrote it also, the uh, Spectacular Spider-Man comic. That's when I first saw White Tiger. It was an issue of Spectacular Spider-Man where he showed up on the covers like, whoa, what's, who's this? So that was my first exposure to the character, not knowing he appeared previously in these magazines. But So he showed up in a couple of, of storylines in Spectacular Spider-Man and also in The Human Fly, which I'll review that. I'll have to review that whole series on this uh, channel. It's a pretty trippy book. And I think he showed up in a Daredevil comic in the 70s. And then, um, I know, I think he had some sporadic appearances, maybe in the 80s and 90s. I lost track of the character. Uh, but anyway, I'm glad I got this. It's a historic issue, you know, the first appearance of the White Tiger. Uh, me being interested in, you know, Latino comic book creators and Latino comic book heroes. Uh, this being the first appearance... The first one in a mainstream comic, I guess American comic, definitely a Marvel comic, Marvel's first Latino character. So um, it'll be ni it'll be nice to get the rest of the issues. Well, it'll be nice to read this one and then read the subsequent. So really get the full uh, story of the White Tiger. So um, that's it for me. Um, nice and quick. Like I said, because it's uh, it's not a review since I haven't read it. It's just like you're going through this for the first time like I am. So um that's where we're at with that. So anyway, thanks everybody. And um, 
please do me a favor. Uh, if you liked the video, even if you didn't, just hit the like button really quick. What does it cost you? Um, I appreciate that. It does help out. And a nice, beautiful double page here. Um, and if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe so you can always get a notification on, you know, when the next video is up. Uh, I'll be doing a lot more comic book uh, um, reviews and overviews and maybe unboxings and such like that. So let me just leave it here on the final page one more time. There's a, a lot of Bruce Lee merchandise that, that was sold. Um, but anyway, thanks so much. And we will see you at the next Los Comics TV.